Hey guys, Aries JJ here with you today. Uh, today we're not going to cover mods, we're not going to cover coils, we're not going to cover batteries. Well, at least not literally. What we are going to cover today is Steam Engine. Steam Engine is a amazing tool uh, that every vapor should have in their arsenal uh, to help them vape safer and more efficient. Now, I'm going to have the link to Steam Engine down below, so if you want to pop on over there and follow along, you're more than welcome to. If you want to wait till after the video, by all means. But uh, definitely go to Steam Engine's website and give them, uh, you know, check them out and, and just kind of play around and see what it has to offer you. So with that being said, let's go ahead and pop on over to Steam Engine and see what all they've got that, uh, that comes in handy for us as vapors. Okay, so this is the Steam Engine main page. You can see that we've got a list of tabs up at the top. Now, this is the website as of uh, the recording of this video. It is always subject to change, and in this day and age, and with the internet, things change rapidly. Lars, uh, who created the Steam Engine website, is constantly coming through and updating, making the website more efficient, uh, integrating the newest technology that we as vapors use, uh, so there will be uh, most likely changes fairly often. Uh, but uh, this, this website helped me tremendously as a new vapor. Um, I passed the information on to other new vapors and they found it uh, very, very helpful. So hopefully you guys will too. Now, down here under the sections, uh, we can see that it is telling you a general synopsis of what each section does. So, uh, but we'll go ahead and, and touch on those. Uh, there's a few that I'm just kind of briefly touch on, but I don't use them very often. So I, I don't know the full ins and outs of them, like the uh, e-liquid tab. I'm not a DIYer, guys. No secret. I don't like mixing my own e-liquid when there's plenty of companies out there that can mix e-liquid for me. Sorry. But, uh, but if you are a DIYer, we will take a quick glance at that and, uh, and, and kind of see what it offers for you. So first and foremost is Ohm's Law. Now, this is a standard Ohm's Law calculator for those that don't have the ability or just don't want to take the time to, uh, to do the math themselves. For most of these scenarios, we're gonna be using just a standard 0.5 ohm coil. You know, it's something simple, easy to work with. Uh, so with that being said, we're, we're gonna go ahead and change our resistance to 0.5 ohms. So we've got our 0.5 ohms. You don't have to put the zero on there. You can leave it at just 0.5. Uh, and then we're gonna click away and we can see, you know, that this information does update itself automatically anytime we swap over. So if we're using a regulated mod, and let's say we want to put it at uh, 60 watts. Okay, so we can come down here to the power, which is the wattage, and we can change that to 60. And what that tells us is that we're going to be vaping at approximately 5.48 volts and just a touch under 11 amps. Now, why might this come in handy? Well, let's say we're building on a series mod where instead of a, uh, you know, a series mech mod, unregulated. If we're building on a series mech mod, 4.2 batteries in series, theoretically comes out to 8.4. Now in real life, you're actually not gonna get a full 8.4 at the RDA. You're gonna get 7.8 to 8.0. We'll use the 7.8 just, uh, just for reference. So we can come in here and change that 7.8, and we can see that we're vaping at a theoretical 121.68 watts, pulling 15.6 amps. Under most scenarios, you're perfectly safe in that range. You're gonna get a pretty strong hit. You're not putting a whole lot of strain on your batteries. You're safe most of the time, depending on your, check your batteries just to make sure. But let's go ahead and drop that ohm level Let's say we've got a 0.2 build using the exact same batteries. Now we see that we're at the 39 amp range. Most batteries that we use in vaping 
are generally in that 20 to 24 amp range. Uh, by all means, go out and check out Mooch. You can find him on Facebook and a couple of the forums, ECF, for example. Uh, and he has testing for each individual battery. By all means, go ahead and check out uh, what the, you know, what he has done and what he has found with the, you know, with the various batteries that are out there. But a 39 amp pull on most batteries, you're in the danger zone. You know, you, you want to be careful. You want to keep that amp discharge uh, under the levels of what your batteries are rated for. For the record, I don't recommend running a 0.2 ohm coil set on a unregulated series mech. It's not good. Don't recommend it. But you can come in here and you can lock in your voltage. You can lock in your current, which is your amp limit. You can lock in your power, which is your wattage, and just kind of play around and see what's safe and what isn't. The next tool is our coil wrapping tool. Now, as a new vapor, I found this tool absolutely amazing. This, this was my lifeline, and I've taught and shown other people that I've wanted to move into the building world, go out here and use this tool. This will get the muscle memory and it will get the, the base knowledge of wrapping coils into your head and readily available. We can come in here under the materials and profile section and pick our material. We've got our canthals, we've got our nichromes, our stainless steels, our exotic wires, titanium, tungsten, Ni-200s, niphthals, they've got a little bit of everything out here. Uh, pretty much all the material that we use on a daily basis is vapors. Most new vapors are gonna start off with canthal A1. So let's go ahead and choose Canthal A1. Now over here in the profile, you have the option of choosing round. If you're gonna use twisted or parallel, you can choose that. If you're gonna use ribbon, you can choose that. It gives you that option as well. Most new vapor is gonna start off with just regular round Canthal wire. Next up is your diameter. Now, if you're in the US and you use the AWG method, or if your wire is sent to you uh, using the AWG uh, measurement system, you can come in here and just set in whatever AWG you've got. If it's 26 gauge, you're just gonna type 26 gauge. If it's uh, 28 gauge, you're, you're just gonna type 28 gauge. Now you can use your up and down arrow key to adjust. You can click on these arrows right here and they will adjust, uh, you know, just, however you feel like doing it, it works. Uh, now, if you're over in the UK or the EU, or you've got wire uh, that is measured in the metric units uh, system, you can come over here and manually type in what you're using. Uh, like if we're using 0.35 Canthal, we can come over here and type 0 0.35 and it will automatically adjust. For those wondering, uh, 0.35 millimeter comes out to 27.26 AWG, go figure. But uh, since I'm, I'm familiar with the AWG system, I'm gonna go ahead and just use 26 AWG since that's what most builders uh, start off with is the 26 gauge or the 0.4 millimeter if you're over in the UK or EU. That's generally what you're gonna start with. Um, for setup, this is how many coils you wanna run, how, what style coils you wanna run. Now these are all basic macro coils, okay? So you've got your single and your dual, triples and so on and so forth. You've got your serial builds, you've got your serial parallel builds, which is generally well above and beyond what most of you are gonna be using, What even what I use. I generally stick to a dual coil system or at the most I'll stick with a parallel coil, which uh, I'll get into that a little bit later uh, when we get over into the wire wizard. But we're just gonna stick with the dual coil today. So we've got our dual coil and our target resistance is gonna be what you want your coils to ohm out at. Now, we're gonna, like I said, we're gonna stick with that 0.5 ohm range. So we're just gonna come in here and type 0.5 ohms. Your inner diameter of coil is exactly what it sounds like. It's what size of a mandrel you're wrapping your coil around. If you're using a coil master, the, the, uh, your diameters are measured out on the rods, whether it be a 2.5, 3, 3.5, whatever the case may be. 
If you're using a precision screwdriver set, you need to make sure that you know uh, what size uh, precision screwdrivers you have. Uh, like for instance, this precision screwdriver right here is a 2.4 millimeter. So uh, when in doubt, measure. If you have a caliper set, that comes in extremely handy. Uh, but for the most part, I use a 2.5 millimeter mandrel. So we're gonna go ahead and pop that in as a 2.5. Now, when it comes to leg length, now this is the total per coil. So this is between the two legs. They've got it defaulted at a five millimeter, which is gonna put you fairly close to the post. I generally don't change this because I try to get mine as close to the post as possible. Um, where you'd wanna change this is if you're doing something like a hanger coil, which this tab is basically gonna be useless for you anyways, unless you're going through and using the custom resistance uh, located way down here this custom resistivity. Um, but uh, for your average builder, uh, you're not gonna be messing with hanger coils. Uh, but the leg length by adjusting is gonna have some effect, but it's gonna be minuscule at best. So I, like I said, I generally leave mine at the five millimeter mark. Adjust yours as you see fit. If you like to have yours way far away from your center post, go ahead and kind of measure out and see what your two legs come out to and add that uh, and modify that as, as need be. But going with the information that we have here, we can see that the number of wraps needed to obtain a dual coil 0.5 ohm coil or, uh, ohm set is 8.05 wraps per coil. Now remember, this is per coil. So we're gonna go ahead and round that to a standard eight wrap coil. Now, if you're using something like the velocity deck and you have one leg coming out uh, in one direction uh, at the bottom of the coil and another leg coming out on the same side of the coil but it's coming out at the top of the coil so basically you've got your legs pointing in the same direction but one's closer to the bottom one's coming to the top perfect setup for a velocity deck uh, but in the wrap count world uh, that's considered a half wrap so what you need to take into account on that is that these are half wraps. So you want your count inside between those legs to be the number that, uh, that, it, that it's telling you uh, right here or that's gonna be your full wrap count. If you're looking at it with the legs facing away from you, that's where that first number comes in, uh, but you're, you're actually at the eight and a half wrap. Uh, so you're going to own just a little bit above uh, what your target resistance is. Not a whole lot, though. Uh, but yeah, that's so that's the basics of the coil wrapping tab. By all means, come in here, play around, you know, do a little bit of testing, see how well it works. This isn't going to be a spot on. It will vary based on the ohm reader of your mod, the ohm reader, you know, the standalone ohm reader that you use. Uh, it'll vary a little bit by the material, whether you've got impurities in it or, you know, what have you. So uh, don't take this as, you know, as pure gospel set in stone. This is what it's going to be, but it's going to get you fairly close. The next tab is your battery drain tab. Now this is gonna give you a rough guesstimate as to how long a battery set will last you. Now these are under optimal conditions. Um, I don't use this a whole lot. I have a general understanding of how long my battery is gonna last you. If you're, if you're running a regulated mod, you've got a battery uh, indicator that tells you when your batteries are, are low. But you can come in here, like if we're gonna use that 0.5 again, so we'll put in our 0.5 uh, ohm. It's got battery presets in here, so you know you can kind of come through and find uh, which batteries you're using, whether they're the HG2s, or if you're using the Samsung 25Rs. Let's see where those at. Uh, there they are. Samsung 25Rs, the 2500 Ma. Uh, you know you can come through, and again these are convenience only. You can adjust uh, if need be. Uh, but it comes through and it tells you, like, if we're running a 0.5 on an unregulated mech, your estimated runtime is 20 minutes. Now, that doesn't mean that you're only vaping for 20 minutes before you have to uh, pop in a new battery. What that's telling you is that's 20 minutes worth of button push time. No, that doesn't mean that you need to hold down your button for 20 minutes. Uh, but 20 minutes of combined uh, button pushes. Uh, 
if you're using five second puffs, your estimated number of five second puffs is going to be about 243. Again, these are under ideal circumstances. Don't take them as gospel, but they give you a fair understanding of what you're looking at. For your mod range tab, this is where you can come through and find your mod's sweet spot of uh, what works best for it. So under the APV preset tab or section, uh, we've got a list of a vast majority of mods that are out on the market. You know, you've got all your Evolve DNAs, you've got your Inakins, your Kangers, your Camrys, uh, your Segelis, all of your Smock products. Uh, surprisingly enough, it only has the Wismec Arcs uh, 200S listed for the Wismex. I'm, I'm kind of shocked on that. Uh, but then, you know, it's also got all your Yeehe mods and, and what have you. Uh, but you can go through here and let's use uh, the Wismec Arcs 200S. So we've got the RX 200S here. Uh, I'm not sure what the current uh, max wattage is on the 200S right now, but I think it's 200. So we're gonna go ahead and change that to 200. Um, and I know the resistance doesn't go down to a 0 0.05. So we're gonna go ahead and change that to a 0 0.1 just to update and give it the current information. If I'm not mistaken, it cuts off at three ohms too. So we're gonna go ahead and change that to three ohms. It's right for a majority of this stuff, but uh, it, eh, it is what it is. But uh, what this is telling you is that the sweet spot for the um, battery usability, you know, for the battery life, uh, is to run it right around a 0.331 to get the uh, to get the most life out of your battery, uh, and that's if you're going to run it at uh, at the full 200 watts. Now, of course, you can go through and play around and, you know, tell it that I don't want to hit above 100 watts and it'll adjust accordingly. Like if we go in ahead and change it, it's going to say, OK, well, if you don't want to hit above 100 watts, but you're wanting to hit it at 9 volts, then you want to run it at a 0.534. Again, you know, I, I don't play around in this tab very much because I know what what type of vape I like. Most of you know what type of vape you like. Stick with that quite personally. E-liquid. Now, I'm not a DIYer. Uh, I probably will never DIY because, yeah, no, I'm a coil builder. That's who I am. So I don't have much need for this tab. Some of you out there do. Um, there's a multitude of DIY calculators out here. This is just one extra tool within the steam engine set. Uh, you can come in and uh, tell it how big of a batch you want to make. If you want to make 120, you can change that to 120 mil. Uh, your nicotine base, is it uh, PG base or is it VG base? You know, you can come in and tell it what you want if, it, if it's mixed for some odd reason, which most of them are either 100% PG or 100% uh, VG. Um, but you can tell it, you know, if it's 50-50, it'll automatically update the other. Uh, and this is where you'll tell it what percentage of uh, nicotine your uh, your base is, and it will adjust accordingly. Now, realize that the way this is written out, this is 270 milligrams with the way nicotine is, is calculated, at least that's my understanding. Don't crucify me if I'm wrong on this part. Again, I'm not a DIYer. But like, um, if I'm not mistaken, um, 100 milligram would be 1.0 percent okay again could be wrong don't think i am but i could be wrong uh let, let's go ahead and put this back to 100 percent pg uh and then um yeah because i'm wanting to say that three at three milligram is 0.3 i'm almost positive that's right Again, not a DIY wire. If you're a DIY wire, you guys know what you're doing. Just come in here and you can pop this in. You can come through and uh, I know it gives you the opportunity down here to add all of your flavorings and what the VG percentage is. The one thing that does gripe on me, you know, from my science background is anytime you're dealing with ratios, they go in alphabetical order. So PG comes before VG. Sorry guys, it's a science thing. Uh, so the fact that they've got them listed as VGPG, a little bit of a gripe, but eh, it is what it is. 
So uh, I'm not going to give them too uh, too much gripe over that, but uh, but yeah, it gives you that option uh, to come in here and uh, do DIY. Um, most people that are coming to Steam Engine are going to come here for the coil building. Uh, if you're going to be do, do, doing DIY, there's a metric ton of other calculators out there that have all the flavorings built into it, and you can go through and adjust. The thing that I like most about Steam Engine, though, is this next tab, Wire Wizard. Using Wire Wizard, you can develop just about any wire combination out there. Now, the standards that they have is single wire, parallel, twisted, Clapton, and staggered Clapton. You may be thinking, well, you know, that's not a whole lot of options. We've got uh, alien wires, and we've got uh, staples and frame staples. You're right, we do. So let's say we want to make a uh, let's say we want to make a frame staple. Well, we can come in and tell it that we're going to do a Clapton because, at the end of the day, that's what a frame staple is: is a really glorified Clapton. So we come over here. Now it, it's saying, well, what's your core wire and what's your wrap wire? But what it also tells you, it gives you the option to change what your cores are. So if we're doing a frame staple, we can come in here and tell it, well, we've got a parallel. And we're using Canthal for our frame. Now, be wary that you need to try to position these as close to possible to how you're really wanting your wire to end up. So because your frames are going to go on the outside, you want your frames to uh, to circulate on the, outs on, on the top and bottom of your core set. So if we're using 26 gauge Canthal for our core wire, we can do that. Now, What's nice down here is below the secondary wire is we've got a little plus sign. Well, that allows us to add a core. So if we're using ribbon, we can pop down and say that we want one piece of ribbon inside. Now, the way that they've got this set up is a little weird, um, and it's something that it took me a little while to get used to. Uh, your width of the, the thickness of your ribbon it's going to go in the first one. The width is going to go into the second one. So if you're running uh, 0.5 millimeter, let's call it 0.4 millimeter because that's what I normally use. 0.4 millimeter ribbon, your thickness is going to be in the first one, which is 0.1 millimeters. Your second one is going to be your 0.4. So we can come through and let's say we're going to do six cores of uh, ribbon wire. So we can come through and do our ribbon, change these all again, 0.1 to 0.04. Ribbon, 0.1 to 0.04. Okay, so we've got three, four, five, six, and then we need our frame wire, which I'm going to have to go through and change all of these as well. 0.01 to 0.04, or 0.4. Change this one. 0.1 to 0.4 change this one as well and we see that this last one is going to be that secondary frame you know that opposite frame so we're going to go back and do 26 gauge frame so we've got one frame up here all of our ribbon stack and we've got our secondary frame right here and then it's just a matter of telling it what you're going to fuse that with let's say 36 gauge canthal so we've got our 36 gauge round canthal and we'll just go out and uh, you come up here to the top and it's going to ask you what do you want your inner diameter to be now frame staples i generally run either a 2.5 or a 3 ohm or i'm sorry 2.5 or a 3 millimeter i'm just going to choose a 2.5 choose whatever works for you uh how many wraps do you want it to be well, that's going to depend on how big of an RDA you have, first and foremost. Uh, secondly, you're also going to have to take into account um, what the ohm limit is on your on your device. So if we choose a six wrap or seven, let's go ahead and choose a seven wrap uh, coil. Again, we're leaving our leg length 
pretty close to, uh, to default. I'm not going to touch it. We can see that our resistance on this is a 0 0.207 ohm. That's per coil. So if you're running this in a dual coil setup, you're going to come out to about a 0 0.10, what, 3-ish. That's after it's burned in. Prior to burn in, it's going to be a little bit lower than that. So, you know, you'll need to take that into account. Uh, and when you're looking at this, if you're, if you're running it in a dual coil setup, You'll want to build a little bit higher than what your bottom limit is on your mod. So if you're running a, uh, a mod that can only fire down to 0.1, you want this to definitely be higher than a 0.2 per coil. So let's go ahead and bump this up to a 3 millimeter. And this is where you can do some playing around. So we see that just changing that to a 3 millimeter changed the resistance of our coil to right at 0.24. In a dual coil setup, after everything's burned in, you're looking at about a 0.12. Uh, and of course, this going through, um, if you're running two coils, you're going to take the resistance and you're going to divide it by two. If you're running three coils, you're going to take the resistance, you're going to divide it by three, so on and so forth. And that's what your, uh, what your total resistance, your final resistance is, is going to be. Uh, so if we were running this in a quad coil, we would take this 0.24 and divide it by 4. And that's what you're going to finish up with as uh, what's actually going to be put on your mod. But, uh, but yeah, you can come through and play around and do, you've got your staggered Claptons. If you want to run two different wires for your staggered Claptons, you can. If you want to run six wires, you can. I mean, the, the possibilities are endless. The only thing that I haven't been able to find on here or figure out a way how to do it is uh, by using a, uh, a corrugated wire, which I'm sure that that may become a possibility in the future. As of now, I can't figure it out uh, on how, uh, because when dealing with corrugated wire, because of the crinkle, you're adding length, which is going to, uh, it's going to increase the resistance. So. But again, these numbers aren't set in stone. They give you a good starting spot. Uh, what I found in my personal experience is that the resistance on these that it gives you here under the results is a touch lower than what it actually ends up. You may have d different results. So I'm, I'm going to say use this as a guidepost. Don't use this as a set in stone. This is what it's going to be. But uh, this is definitely a, uh, a tool that comes in handy. I'm going to pop back over to the face cam because uh, the converter, that, that just converts millimeters to inches. You can find that on Google. Uh, it, it doesn't have a whole lot of effect here. Um, but yeah, Steam Engine is a valuable tool that we as vapors can use. Uh, you know, I, I've talked with Lars once. Uh, when the rumor was going around that steam engine was being brought down, uh, you know, early this year, 2017. Uh, and Lars assured me that he has absolutely no intention of bringing steam engine down and that it will be available to us uh, for the unforeseeable future, you know, or for, I'm sorry, for the foreseeable future. Uh, so things are always subject to change, so... Uh, but yeah, go ahead and pop on out to Steam Engine, take a look around, see what it has to offer you as a builder. If you want to use the DIY section, go for it, you know, but just uh, experiment with it. Uh, I know anytime I'm working with a new coil, I'll, first thing I do is I pop out to the wire build, or, you know, to the wire wizard, and I put in the specs of what I'm looking at, and uh, I go from there and say, okay, well, I need to tweak this, or I need to change this material because that's definitely not going to fire on my mod. It's a great tool, guys. So again, I'm going to put the link down below for that. Uh, beyond that, if you have any comments or questions, feel free to comment down below. Uh, definitely like the video, subscribe. Uh, and, and again, you know, it, it's not what you vape or how you vape. It's that you vape. I don't care if you're vaping a 0.1 or a 10 ohm coil. As long as it's safe and it satisfies you, that's all that matters. You're, hopefully, the only one that's going to be vaping on that mod. The vaping experience is yours to enjoy. 
So with that being said, I'm going to take off. Have a good one, guys, and vape safe.